So hello everyone. My name is Marc Etty and I'm an instructor in the Department of Education at the University of Quebec and abitibi Miskaming, which is in Northwestern Quebec. And today I'm going to be discussing the concept of monogamy in multidimensional persistence. So first I'm going to recall briefly how persistence work in the case of um, in the case of continuous filtering functions. Then I'm going to explain what is our approach to multidimensional, at least two-dimensional persistence, as well as the Pareto grid. And finally, I'm going to discuss this interesting phenomenon of monogamy, multidimensional multi persistence. So I'm going to be discussing persistence with this inflatable torus. So we've got a manifold. And on this manifold, we define a continuous function, which is going to be the height function. So the Z function. So at every point, I return its height. And I look at sublevel set persistence. So essentially, the uh, subset of the manifold where the value of the function is smaller or equal to the given value. So essentially, this is equivalent to crossing the torus with a raising plane, rising plane here. So at this point here, I have a connected component that is born, which we refer to as a uh, zero order cycle. At this point here, I have a first one cycle that is born. As I keep rising the raising the plane, at this point, I have a second one cycle that is born. And at this point here, finally, I've got a cavity, essentially a two cycle that is born. Okay, so this is an image of essentially a slice of the torus we just saw. This time we've got two filtering functions, the X function, which is horizontal, and the Y function, which is vertical. And what we're considering, we want to consider both functions at the same time to essentially encapsulate more information about the shape than just one at a time. So what we're going to do is consider essentially lines of positive slope in the codomain of the filtering functions. So in this case, in the plane, in R2. And uh, so what we're doing this is we're taking a line that is parameterized with these two values here, A and B. So A, well, here in the case of the plane, A essentially uh, goes between zero and one and essentially uh, is kind of equivalent to the, um, to the, uh, the, the slope of the kind of controls the slope of the uh, line. And B here kind of allows us to move the line around in space. And what we are doing is the function that we have, essentially what it gives us is if we increase the value, it essentially allows us to cross the, um, the um, essentially cross the manifold like this. So at this point here, I would have my connected component would be born. At this point here, I would have my first one cycle that would be born. At this point here, I would have my second one cycle that would be born. And finally, at this point here, I have my two cycle that is born. And what's interesting as well is that if I change the value at this point here, essentially, the, uh, the uh, filtration that I have is just equivalent that I one that I get using the x filtering function, so the first filtering function. And at this point here is just equivalent to the one that I would get using the second filtering function, the y filtering function. So using this, I can essentially get all the information that my two filtering functions uh, include. And of course, this could also be done, this could also be extended to the case of more than two filtering functions by considering essentially lines in, in this case would be a space of uh, dimension n, essentially, if we've got n filtering functions. Now, the question we may be asking ourselves is what's up with these red half lines going uh, horizontal going to the right and vertical going up? Well, it's not just half lines. If I remove the, uh, the manifold here, we see that we've also got some red arcs. So these arcs here is, uh, they are a set of Pareto points. So essentially, 
what these are is the uh, set of points on the manifold where the gradient of the, the gradients of the two filtering functions are in opposite directions. So essentially, if I'm on the on a point here, for example, I can have both while staying on the manifold, both increase the first and the second filtering function. If I increase X necessarily, Y goes down and vice versa. So they are optimal in the sense of two-dimensional optimization. So what we do is we look at the image of these points on the codomain. And to these, we add these lines, essentially these horizontal lines going right and these vertical lines going up. And this gives us the Pareto grid or extended Pareto grid, which are the uh, set of values in the codomain of the filtering functions that are the only values at which there can be changes in homology. By this, I mean, if I'm at this point, for example, here, it's at this point here that I have my, uh, that I have my connected component that is born. Now, if I change the uh, filtration here, it would be crossing this arc here at this value that I have my first connected component that is born. And similarly, it would be at this value here that I would have my connected component that would be born. So this allows us to essentially know where there can be changes in homology. Now let's look at a somewhat simpler example. This one here, which is just a circle, so one sphere in blue. I've got as filtering functions x and y. I'm also considering the Pareto grid here in red. And in to the right here, I've got the persistent diagram that corresponds to this particular filtration here. So I've got in blue here, the zero order persistent diagram, and in red, the first order persistent diagram. So what this is, essentially, this is a bar that never ends, essentially. So it's an infinite bar, because I've got at this point here, I have my connected component that is born, and it just never dies. So this is corresponds to this bar here. And at this point here, I have my first order cycle that is born, and which also never dies at this point here. Now, if I change the value of the, um, the values of the parameters here, I said when I cross this point here, what happens is that I actually have a second, um, a second point in the zeroth order person diagram that appears. Because at this point here, I have a second connected component that is born, but then dies at this point by merging with the, the one that corresponds to this line here. So I've got here a, essentially a bar that is of finite length. And when we're doing um, when we're doing topological data analysis with persistent diagram, essentially this is what what we're doing is that we have let's say several shapes, and for each of them we look at a persistent diagram and we compare them using some sort of metric or pseudometric. In our case, we often use the bottleneck distance or matching distance, and smaller values of this metric kind of tells us that we have similar shapes, and larger values tell us that we have um, not so similar shapes. And so we were interested in essentially defining a multidimensional matching distance by looking at the um, essentially the maximum as we move over all of these parameter values of the distance that we would get using this. Now, this does work. And one thing that we noticed is that in many cases, it was often the case that it was when a here, the first parameter value is equal to one half that this maximum was attained. A equal one, equals one half essentially means that we have a line of slope one in the uh, codomain, which is R2. So that was interesting, which we set down on trying to demonstrate to trying to prove. And um, so the idea of course, is that in this case, if we look at the, um, if we look at the person's diagrams as the parameter values change, we kind of have a, uh, the, uh, the points in the person diagram kind of move continuously. So we set out on trying to prove why is it that it's at A equals one half that we actually have this maximum that occurs, but we reached an interesting phenomenon, 
which I'm going to show here. So let's consider this function here. So we've got as filtering function. So the domain is R2, but we could consider a, a, uh, a closed subset of this. The first filtering function is just X. And the second one is this. So this here essentially is we've got four lines here. And we extend the function on the segments joining each of these lines linearly. And as well to the left and to the right of this, we also extend linearly. So what does this look like? It looks like this. So this is the function in question. So if I look at it from the front, so in red here, we've got the x-axis, in blue, the z-axis. So we can see fairly easily the four lines, but it's even more clear, it's even clearer here. We've got those four lines here. And what happens is that essentially each of these, um, when we cross, each of these, one of these two lines, we have a uh, some birth, and we cross. And when we cross one of these two points, one of these two lines here, we have a death in the person diagrams. We exclude here in this case the um, the bars that are of infinite length. We just consider these uh, where we have a um, a finite length. But at this point here, essentially at this parameter value, a equals one half, b equals zero, I see that I have the two births and the two deaths simultaneously. So I have a superposition of points in the person diagrams. So we refer to this parameter value, a, b, as a singular parameter value. But if we set out on essentially moving around this singular parameter value, what happens is that here, essentially, the, um, the two points kind of decouple let me turn around. So can move just around this here. And so we've got essentially four, like this. So we've got essentially four, two points in the uh, person diagram and kind of moving around and moving continuously, of course. And so what this gives us is this here. So I've got a singular parameter value here, which is at a equals one quarter and b equals zero. So the parameter value is this one and it corresponds to this person diagram. So in this case, the colors are just, um, I just chose arbitrarily the color. So we've got one point which is in blue and one that is in red. And the reason why they are colored is that if we can look at the point P here, as I move it around the uh, singular parameter value, I've got here the blue to the left and to the top of the red. And as I move around, I can reach essentially the same versus an diagram, but now the red point is to the left and to the top of the blue point and so on. Can they move continuously? But essentially changes, change their positions. So this is what we refer to as the phenomenon of monodromy in multidimensional person. And it was a uh, kind of a difficulty in trying to establish an identity in the case of, um, parameterized persistent diagrams. So, so these are a few uh, articles that I would suggest reading to get more information about this, um, about this subject that I discussed. So the first two here are essentially two articles where this approach to multidimensional persistence through uh, lines of positive slope was introduced. The third article here is the one where we first talked about monotony in multidimensional persistence, as well as the, uh, the example that I showed. And the fourth one here is the one where the uh, Pareto grid is being introduced, and as well where the article where we uh, introduce a concept of a coherent matching distance, which essentially kind of finds a distance between parameterized families of person diagrams, but taking in, into account the uh, movement of the points through space as the parameter value changes. And this is also where we kind of prove an interesting um, result regarding the, um, the importance of lines of slope one, that is lines where the parameter value A is equal to one half. So, I thank you for your attention and take care.